we've been trying to get our summer forages in the ground. We finally got them in the ground. They're up. They're looking good. We're basically on a mating schedule with those crops and we've got some idle time. You know me, I'm always looking for a reason to do some type of trapping episode. So right now we're headed to Robert Waddell's and we're gonna get inside the mind of a professional trapper on how he builds his snares. This show's gonna be a little bit longer than normal. It's not gonna have a bunch of fancy editing, but it's gonna be solid information for you guys that have either used snares in the past and have bought them or have, are wanting to use some snares and wanting to know how to build them. All right, it's early July. Uh, it's time to start thinking about our equipment ready for this fall. I use an awful lot of snares, uh, whether I'm in Iowa uh, or in different various southern states where they're legal. Everything from snaring beaver to snaring coyotes to snaring coons. I make my own snares. You can uh, buy a commercial snare if you want, but once you buy the snare and use it, you've already got the components. So if you're going to do much snaring, you really need to learn how to build your own snares. When we're building snares, obviously you're going to need some type of a lock. You're going to need the, the stops for the end cable uh, that go on the end of the cable, uh, whether it's a, a steel annealed nut for a stop or an aluminum ferrule. Uh, you'll need the swivel washers to go between the stop and the, and the swivel that we're going to make for the snare. Obviously, you need a chunk of cable. This piece of plastic tubing here is 3 16 ID vacuum tubing. It goes on the cable and we use it as a support collar when we're supporting the loop over the trail or supporting the snare. Uh, and then of course the cable and then we use small stops for what we call a deer stop. This will keep that loop from closing down uh, small enough to where it could possibly catch a deer by the hind leg. Basically a two and a half, two and three quarter inch loop and that will allow that deer to, if it should come down the trail, to step in this uh, loop and pull it shut and then slide it down off the leg without harming the deer. Uh, this is something that most trappers should seriously consider is using a, a deer stop on this loop because almost any, everywhere that we're working coyotes, working coons, we've always got incidental deer to worry about that use the same trails, especially around the deer feeders. And this lets them go through and, and never have to worry about catching or harming a deer. I'm going to cut a chunk of cable. Uh, we'll cut this here at about four foot. This is a uh, commercial cable cutter, but you can do the same thing with just a set of handheld cable cutters that you can buy from any supply house or Home Depot uh, to cut your cable. And it cuts easy. It's just like cutting wire. We need to install an end stop. The first thing that you're going to do is put a, a ferrule or an end stop on your cable. You want it to stick through just about a sixteenth of an inch, uh, just like that. And then crimp it with a swager like so. Again, bring it through just about sixteenth of an inch and press it down, uh, smash it. And these are little long stops here, so I like to double crimp them. You can do the same thing by using a, an anvil or a piece of railroad iron and a hammer. You don't have to smash these plumb out flat, but just by smashing the, uh, the ferrule onto the, uh, the cable. Before we do anything else to the cable, we need to measure down the cable eight and a half inches. And uh, I use a permanent marker. This is the eight and a half inch mark on this table. And I marked that cable eight and a half inches for where the deer stop's going to be. And uh, it's just real simple and easy to do if you mark it before you do anything else to it. Now, holding the cable and keeping everything lined up with itself, where the cable is perpendicular with itself, we need to put a bend right behind this stop, up tight against the stop. And we call it a figure seven bend. We bend it over, hold it with our thumb, and then kink it with a pair of pliers, just like that. That is to allow that lock to be facing the right direction and allow the snare to function properly. Now, we're going to load this snare. What we're going to do when we load this snare is we're going to put some memory in the cable to where it wants to throw the lock down the cable. We'll show you the difference between an unloaded snare and a loaded snare in a minute. But anyway, what we're going to do is uh, simply drag it around a piece of steel with a little bit of tension. And we're looking for a shape like so, basically like a candy cane or a shepherd's hook is what we're looking for. We want Fairly aggressive in the bend here and then tapering off as it comes on around. That there would do a, a, a nice 8 to 10 inch loop. When we drop the lock on the snare, it doesn't matter what type of lock we use, but we always want the side that goes against the animal's body to be up when we drop it on. That makes it so much easier. Uh, anyway, it has the lock facing the right direction when the snare is assembled. Now before we feed the cable back through the lock again, we need to drop on a small, this is a, a very small stop. 
that we're going to use for the deer stop. Slide it down the cable and then simply feed the cable back through the lock like so. And we're going to look at it and make sure we have a nice round loop is what we're, the objective is. And that will let that thing slide down the cable like it's supposed to actually make the snare jump shut. When we do one, if we do a snare where it's not loaded, you end up with a teardrop shape. It won't hardly fall shut on its own. The animal has to physically drag the loop shut all the way. He has to hit it at a charge. He has to be running full blast to drag that loop shut. You see our, you see the mark for the deer stop where we marked it with a magic marker. We're going to slide that stop up on there, and we want to smash uh, that small micro stop where that mark is. Just crimp it on there. Don't have to get super crazy with it. Just smash it flat. Now when we smash these, we want the flat side of that to go against the animal's body. We don't want to smash it the other direction where that, where that burr, the side of that, is, is rubbing on the fur and rubbing on the animal and creating a rub. So just take a few moments and think, your, think it through when you're assembling this. I always put the flat side of these against the animal's body. All right, we've assembled our loop. We've got our deer stop on. We're going to drop on a piece of this uh, 3 16 ID uh, vinyl tubing that we're going to use for a support collar. Simply slide it down the cable and then we're going to slide on a snare swivel and let's stop and we'll make our own swivel to start with. Typically we make most of our swivels out of a piece of number 9 wire. This is just black number 9 wire, 9 to 10, 12 inch length of wire. This is a swivel tool. We're going to put it behind the post like this. We're going to bring the wire around, dividing it evenly in two. One above and one below what we call the spindle. That's what's going to be in the center of the swivel to uh, create the barrel of the swivel. We're going to put a crank on it and simply just crank out our swivel like so. And then we have a completed snare swivel. Uh, as you can see, there's some grease and oil on this wire. It gets on my hands. So that all needs to be cleaned and boiled off after the snares are built. But we have a good, high-quality snare swivel that will outlive you and I. And they'll last for years and years. So the snare swivel gets dropped down the cable. And then we're going to drop on, I like to use two uh, uh, swivel washers. And those are going to go between the stop that we're going to put on the end of the cable and the swivel. And then an annealed nut uh, on the back end of the cable is on this slicker 1x19 cable is what we're going to use for the end stop. This nut has been through a fire, it's removed the temper from it, and it's just soft steel. We do not want to use a nut directly from the hardware store. That nut's going to be hard and we smash it, the nut will crack. And the threads in the nut, uh, when that nut is full temper, act as little chisels and are actually cutting the cable. So we want to use an annealed soft nut and just like you don't have to use a special crimper with them, but you want that cable to stick through about a sixteenth of an inch and then just simply take a hammer and then smack that until it just goes flat. And that will hold uh, as much or more than what this cable out here can hold. And it makes a very good end stop for the snare. The last thing before we finish is we want to line everything up. And you see how this cable's got, a, this loop's got a little bit of a bend? We want to straighten that out. Uh, it just takes a little tweaking right here by hand. We want that loop to be everything perpendicular. Everything needs to be lined up perfectly with itself. We have a nice round loop. Now when we set this in the field, something to remember. If you set the lock, let's say the support wire is back here where my thumb and index finger are. If you set that lock all the way back against that support wire when the animal gets up against that loop and he's pulling it, it won't jump shut. You want to have that lock out in front about three quarters to an inch from that support wire and then that snare will snap shut, will actually jump shut on its own. Uh, do it again for you. You see, and you end up with a good neck catch on that animal, which is the ideal catch that we're looking for. After your snares are assembled, this new cable, your new wire, if you used a new wire making new swivels, it's got grease and, and cosmoline on it, uh, oil from the machining process of when the cable was made. And we need to get rid of this oil off of the wire or off of the new cable so that basically it's scent free. So the animal does not smell it, notice that there's anything in the trail uh, when it's coming down the trail where it takes a loop like it's supposed to and doesn't smell anything out of the ordinary. The easiest way to accomplish this, I roll my snares up, of course you're going to transport them rolled up, keep them everything like so, and uh, in a five or six quart pan or uh, just any type of a 
of a, of a pan, a little bit of baking soda and some water, and I bring them to a boil, not much baking soda, maybe half a teaspoon to a two gallon of water, and bring them to a boil. You'll notice some black oil and stuff come off that wire, come off the cable. You'll see a little bit of flecks of oil up on the top of the water as when you bring it to a boil. And then shut, shut the burner off and simply pour the water off the snares. That way you're pouring the oil off the top of the water and to get the oil out of the cable. And then rinse them good. If, if you do use a baking soda boil, you want to get, rinse all that baking soda out of the cable so it doesn't corrode or, or eat on the cable uh, as time goes on. And then we're simply going to paint the snares to uh, camouflage them. Generally, I paint uh, four to six snares at a time. Before these snares are painted, uh, we're going to open them up to roughly the diameter of the loop that we're going to use in the field, eight or ten inch loop, like so. And uh, I, like I said, I paint four to six of them at a time. And just simply some nails on a tree uh, make it easy to hold the loops open. There is a reason to the paint scheme that I use on these snares. When they're set in the field and we go to setting a snare after a while, you'll understand the paint scheme so much better. But basically the top of the loop coming around to about, with the loops facing this direction, coming around to about four o'clock, we're gonna paint an OD green. It's just simply a Rust-Oleum camouflage low gloss paint that you can buy at any hardware store. Same thing that you use on your duck boats or on your uh, deer stands. And we're gonna paint that cable, paint those locks down about so. And, uh, and of course you can paint the rest of the cable as well if you want. The bottom of the loop, which is gonna be down in the grass just above the ground, uh, from whatever that is, eight o'clock over here to four o'clock, we paint it a very light tan. Looks like dead foxtail, like so. Sorry. The outside of the loop from 10 o'clock down again to 8 o'clock over here. We actually paint a dark color. We want the animal to see that part of the loop. That will be the offside from where the snare support is. And we want them to see that much of the loop. It helps bring their face back over and centered in the loop. When we set these after a bit, uh, it'll become very self-explanatory as far as the, uh, uh, the color scheme. Now, when these are dry, and it just takes a moment for this aerosol paint to dry, we simply turn those snares around and re, uh, repeat the uh, painting process again. The same paint scheme. All right, we have a painted camouflage snare. Uh, one of the things when we get the field you have to think about is how you're gonna anchor this snare. And you've got your snare swivel here and basically the easiest way, if you remember when you're building your extension cables or your earth anchors, if you leave the eye open on them, uh, decent size, you know, a decent size eye on the end of the cable, you can simply pass it through the snare swivel like so, then you're gonna take the snare itself and the lock and pass back through this cable like this. We call this square knotting them together and simply get that eye of that cable, that loop, down on that snare swivel like that. You notice how everything swivels and functions just fine. We didn't have to go buy a, uh, a split ring or a quick connect or a, a lap link or anything like that to connect them. And it's just real simple. Same way if, if we're tying these off, if we're uh, trapping beaver, we need a little more extension cable to go up and go around the tree. We can simply hook another cable onto it like that. Or we can use the same thing when we're actually attaching the snare to an earth anchor. If you leave the eye of the uh, if you leave the eye of the earth anchor open, uh, big enough like this, you can attach this directly to the snare swivel, just like we did the eye of this extension cable. And to take them apart, same, just reverse process, just simply pull the loop back through the, the snare loop and the lock back through the eye of the cable and unthread it. You don't need a lot of specialty tools or a bunch of other hardware that you have to keep track of to attach your extension cable to your snare. Sometimes when you get into these demos, I feel like I'm, I'm ready to ask for questions after doing this so many years at the Trappers College and, and teaching at the Trappers College for the FTA. Uh, if you're looking for an additional instructions and, and uh, some on the line experience as far as uh, from a variety of different instructors, the Trappers College is probably the most economical place to go for trapper education uh, to learn to become proficient with not only snares, but any of the tools that modern day trappers use.
sometimes you just gotta get on, old chap. Let him loosen up a little bit. I am what I am. <laughs> if you sit me down, I'm gonna talk like this. <laughs> plantations, nothing can be better. That would have been good if he hadn't have just bulldozed the camera. <laughs>